Welcome to Learning with Mo. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can install or run Windows 10 in a virtual box in a Linux distribution. Now, I'll go ahead and launch it here. I am running Linux Mint, which is the first step in the process. I failed miserably trying to get VirtualBox to work in different distributions of Linux, like especially Ubuntu, elementary OS, it just has not worked. It requires a lot of command line and lots and lots of elevated privileges. So I'll go ahead and show you how I have this running currently in Linux Mint. So first thing you need to do is go ahead and install Linux Mint, get rid of Ubuntu, get rid of the other distributions that you're using if VirtualBox is not working for you. I'll go ahead and look for VirtualBox in here. I'll go ahead and launch it. And I first just want to show you that it's actually working. So here's the virtual box for my Linux Mint distribution. Here's Windows 10, I have it installed. Here you can see all of the different settings. I'll go ahead and start it up. Now, if you've been trying to solve this, typically right away, you'll see a message that appears at the top right of your screen, letting you know that USB support is not functional, right? As you can see, I don't have that problem here. I'll go ahead and close these messages. And here we go. So here's Windows 10. Everything is working perfectly fine. Here's my start menu. I've installed a couple of applications in here as well. I'll go ahead and launch Brave. I already have Brave up and running. I'll do a quick uh, speed test in here just to make sure everything is working. And there we go. So we've got 700 megs per second. Now, you may have been able to do this at, at this point. We can install Windows in VirtualBox for Linux. And, you know, we can run applications inside of it if we want to. But again, this video is just to show you that I, that I have the USB support up and running in here. I'll go ahead and minimize this window. And if you take a look down here, if I right click on the USB icon here, it says no USB devices attached. But if I right click right away, we can see all of the USB devices on my host computer. So here's my microphone. Here is my, here's my camera. Here is my, uh, here's my flash drive that I have inserted here as well. So I'll go ahead and minimize the Windows 10 machine here. And as you can see, so here are the different drives that I have currently connected. I'll quickly show you. Here's my one terabyte drive. Here is another drive that I have. And here's the actual um, USB drive that I have connected in here. Right? I'll go ahead and click on File Manager just to show you exactly what it is. So right now, I want to go ahead and connect to this Linux Mint drive here. So I'll go back into my virtual box. I'll go ahead and right click on the USB attachment here, just like we would in Windows. And I'll go ahead and connect to that Kingston Data Traveler. And there you go, you can see it's already showing up. So it's basically detached it from my, from my host. And now I can view the contents of this removable disk, which is pretty, pretty cool. This is just a boot media that I created um, to be able to install Linux Mint. So we're only seeing uh, some basic in installations on here as well. So that is pretty much how that works. So pretty, pretty nice. So I can access the contents of that drive and I am good to go. Now, this was especially important to me because I wanted to, you know, I, I got rid of Windows. I did. I got rid of Windows. I'm running Linux exclusively now. But what I wanted was to run Windows inside of Linux because I still want to be able to record and teach some of Microsoft products like, you know, Microsoft Office and other things like that as well. So it's very important that I will be able to um, connect my microphone and my camera if I needed to. Now, I've already confirmed I can connect those. I can't do that right now because I'm currently using my microphone, but it's working perfectly fine and I'm good to go. So how do we get this up and running? Well, I'll go ahead and minimize this. Now that you see that it's working properly, we're not getting any errors and you can see we can run programs here inside of this Windows 10 machine. Now, 
the first thing we need to do is, again, I've tried different flavors uh, of Linux and it just does not work. If you want the most efficient way to install VirtualBox, again, if you've been struggling with it, I highly recommend installing Linux Mint. This is the distribution that I'm using. Once I started using this, I, I was really pleased because when you click on the software manager, so here's the software manager, it's really updated. If I type VirtualBox, now look at what it's giving me. It's giving me not just one VirtualBox, it's giving me the VirtualBox extension pack. It's also giving me the guest editions. It's giving me the VirtualBox and the VirtualBox base. So in other words, it's giving me all the tools that I need to be able to run VirtualBox right here from the software manager. I don't have to go and run command line to, um, to install all of these different dependencies and packages. And if, if you've been using Ubuntu, this is not available in the software manager. You have to go to VirtualBox's website, find the correct distribution to download, and then use the command line to extract the package and run. It's, it's just a lot. So I want to help you out. So the first thing you want to do, install Linux Mint, right? You can always use a program like, um, like Rufus. So if you're using Windows, you can use you can use a program like Rufus. There's a lot of videos out there on how to use Rufus. It's a pretty nice program. So you can use Rufus to go ahead and download and um, to create a bootable media for Linux Mint. If you're already using Ubuntu, you should have the startup disk creator. And let's see if I have that here on, I don't have it actually here, but if you're using Ubuntu, you have the startup disk creator. And then you can just use that and install um, Linux Mint. Linux Mint is free to download. It's only a 2.9 megs in size. So feel free to do that. The next thing is to install VirtualBox from the software manager. As you can see, it's right here. And then you can go ahead and install your, your Windows 10 from a licensed ISO file. So again, uh, with the VirtualBox, you just go ahead and fire up the, the new wizard here. It's going to ask you questions. You have to locate your ISO file. All right, so, so here's my ISO file. So you can go ahead and, and locate it and you can go ahead and, and either install it manually or you can have the unattended installation as well. This is not so much about how to install Windows 10. This is how to get the USB device to, to attach properly here. Okay, so once you do that, um, the only command line that you need to run is you need to, you need to add the permissions for the VBox users group. Now, this is why this makes sense. I'll click on my users here. And I'll go ahead and type in my password. Now, when you take a look at the users and groups, if you click on the groups and scroll down to the bottom, you will notice a VBox users group. So after you install VirtualBox, you'll have this group and you basically need to elevate the privileges so that you can be able to talk to the host OS and be able to use the USB devices. So to do that, you don't have to come here. I tried to come in here and edit it. You can't really do much here. So it's a simple command line. It's right here it's on the screen. So it's just sudo user mod uh, space dash minus a, make sure it's lowercase a, space dash uppercase g, make sure make sure that's uppercase g, vbox users, and then this will be the name of your user account. So for example, if I open up the terminal, and I want to go ahead and add that command in here, right? So sudo user mod minus a minus g vbox users and then here the name of my account is captain right that's the account that i log into the computer with so i'll just type captain right here and that's it so that's what i have to use right so just type it exactly the way it is you can also just search for this on on brave so if you just do a simple brave search i'll go back to my windows 10 here and i'll just say add vbox user, if I can type that correctly.
quick. Add VBox user. And it tells you right here how to do it. All right. So as you can see, it's the same, uh, same command. If you want more confidence, go to an actual Ubuntu page. So here's the actual correct command. You can actually copy that to the clipboard and paste it into your, into your terminal. Again, the main thing, this user, just delete that and type your actual username. So it actually looked like this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Once you do that, the privileges are good to go. The next thing to do is to install the extension pack from the software manager. So here's the extension pack, it's right there for you. And then go ahead and install the guest editions as well. And then you're good to go. Go ahead and install anything else that says virtual box. Just make sure that you're good to go. And that message will disappear that, that typically appears in the top right that says you cannot use your USB devices or USB devices cannot be enumer enumerated, some weird message like that. And you are good to go. The really nice thing I like about Linux Mint here is let's say I'm looking for a video editor. And let's say I want to use Shotcut. Here's what's really nice about it. If I click on install, it's going to install all of the other packages for me. So all of the other dependencies. So sometimes when you install a package, you know, you have to install others, but it's letting me know it's going to install all of these for me. So I don't need to do anything else. I'll be good to go. So that's the benefit. So again, if you just follow these six steps, you will be good to go. Go ahead and install Linux Mint. If you already have it up and running, go ahead and install VirtualBox. Just make sure you have a licensed ISO file for Windows 10. And let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments if that worked for you.